Hello friends, welcome to the video lecture series on basic electronics. I am Dr. Alpesh Dafda and today we will study solar cells, its construction, working, VI characteristics, advantages and uses. Now we all have studied in our school that sun is the ultimate source of energy and solar energy is always a free energy. That is the sunlight that we are getting is always a free energy. So if we generate electricity by some means using the solar energy then that is very very beneficial to the mankind. So solar cells perform that function of generating electricity from the sunlight or solar energy. So this will be the contents of our class. We will see what are solar cells. We will understand the construction and working of a solar cell. We will study the VI characteristics of a solar cell or you can say voltage ampere characteristics of a solar cell. We will see the advantages of solar cells and finally we will see the applications of solar cells. So starting with what are solar cells? So solar cells are specific PN junction device that converts photons or light energy or sunlight into electricity or current or voltage. A solar cell is a special purpose PN device. It is a special diode as compared to the normal PN junction diode that converts solar energy into electrical energy or you can see sunlight into electrical energy. It generates EMF or voltage when solar radiation falls on the PN junction. The working principle of solar cells is photoelectric effect or photovoltaic effect. So what is photoelectric effect? As the name suggests, photoelectric. Generation of electricity when photons or light is falling on it is known as photoelectric effect or photovoltaic effect. Generation of voltage when photons or light is falling on it is called photovoltaic effect. These are manufactured using semiconductor materials having band gap near to 1.5 electron volt like silicon which is having a band gap of 1.1 electron volt, gallium arsenide having a band gap of 1.43 electron volt, cadmium telluride having a band gap of 1.45 electron volt etc. So this is the symbol of a solar cell. So this symbol is similar to the symbol of a photodiode which is also a photovoltaic cell. Just the difference between this and that photodiode is in photodiode we were showing a PN diode like this. Whereas for solar cell we show a EMF voltage like this. We show a EMF voltage surrounded by a circle and two light rays falling on the circle. That suggests that sunlight is falling on the photovoltaic device or solar cell. So this is how an actual solar cell looks like. These are the solar cells inside and these lines are the finger electrodes used for collecting the charge carriers. So let us understand the working and construction of a solar cell. The solar cell is constructed using a n-type semiconductor material over a p-type semiconductor material. The p-type semiconductor material is very thick of approximately 300 micrometer whereas the n-type semiconductor material is very thin of only 0.3 micrometer, 0.3 micrometer. Why this n-type semiconductor material is kept thin? This n-type semiconductor material is made thin so that whatever light is falling on it easily reaches the depletion region or the junction of the p and n device because basically the free charge carriers will be generated inside the junction only. So this is the back contact through which you can take the output. This is the front contact. Over the front contact you can find the metallized finger electrodes. See these are finger electrodes you can see here these lines. These lines are pure metal finger electrodes which are present on the front contact. This is the top surface of that and through this metal finger electrodes we are taking the front connection. So you can even draw this figure by simply showing the N type and P type material like this. This is N type, this is P type material, this is back contact, this is front contact and here you can show the finger electrodes. These are the finger electrodes which are collecting the charge carriers. Now these finger electrodes are looking very wide but it is occupying around less than 15% of the total area of the front face. 
or top surface less than 15 percent why so that maximum light is detected and maximum light reaches the pn and junction this is how the construction is now let us understand the working of a solar cell now whenever a pn junction is formed there is a depletion layer that is formed at the junction so near the junction there are positive ions for the n side and negative ions towards the p side why because n type semiconductor materials are pentavalent semiconductor materials which has got five valence electrons and when it donates one electron it becomes a positive ion because it is a donor and p type semiconductor is a acceptor because it is having holes as the majority charge carriers and therefore the ions which are present here are the negative ions so due to this positive and negative ions what will happen there will be a voltage a depletion voltage of this plus and this minus near the junction now when the light falls on it which is having energy hv greater than the band gap energy of the semiconductor material at that time what will happen a electron hole pair will be generated so when the light falls on the junction a electron hole pair is generated this is a electron this is a hole now due to this depletion potential the electrons are attracted towards the positive side this is positive side and this is negative side so the electrons will be attracted towards or drifted towards the n side and the hole will be drifted towards the p side right and due to this the electron will be flowing like this but we show the conventional current flow from p to n right so this is the direction of current opposite to the direction of actual electron flow this is the direction of actual electron flow but the conventional current will be shown from p to n and that can be collected at the load register i l so this is how a solar cell works when the incident light of energy hv greater than band gap energy eg is applied to the solar cell an electron hole pair is generated due to electric field of the depletion region electrons are drifted to the n side and holes are drifted to the p side and hence current flows through the external circuit you can see here the electrons are drifted towards the n side and holes are drifted towards the p side right electrons are collected by finger electrodes of the front contact and holes are collected by the back contact thus n side becomes negative and p side becomes positive giving rise to photo voltage between front and back contacts okay so here there is positive charge here there is negative charge and so photo voltage is generated in between the front and the back contact let us understand the vi characteristics of a solar cell so the vi characteristics of the solar cell is shown in the fourth quadrant why because it is producing current it is not drawing current we will just understand it so what happens when the voltage is generated okay let us draw like this now this light is falling on the solar cell and the current flows like this you are not connecting any load you are not connecting any load so what will happen that you will get a voltage which is known as voc a open circuit voltage why because this is open circuit and no load is connected to it and you will be getting that voltage but when you get this voltage at that time this current will not be present why because it is open circuit right so let me remove the current so at this point there is some voltage and there is zero current okay so current is zero and voltage is this which you are getting so this is known as voc or open circuit voltage now say you make a connection in between these two right now you are short circuiting the positive and the negative terminal at that time some current will be flowing through it but there will be no voltage so this current that is flowing through it is known as isc or short circuit current this current is known as short circuit current why because you are shorting the front contact and the back contact and not taking any voltage and you are taking the current so at this junction current is flowing and voltage is zero so voltage is zero and 
current is flowing so this is known as isc now the question comes in your mind that why this isc is shown negative actually it is not negative it is flowing from p to n only but as it is not drawing current and rather generating current we show it in the negative side or the fourth quadrant getting it so as the solar cell is generating current and not drawing current the characteristics of solar cell are shown in the fourth quadrant and this will be the maximum current and voltage at some particular point if you are connecting a load like this so this is the maximum current or voltage that will be available from a solar cell so now remember it is not necessary that the light that is falling on the solar cell to be sunlight only any light that will exceed the band gap energy hv greater than eg it may be normal daylight also or it may be some other light also that exceeds the eg voltage will activate the solar cell and generate the current and voltage so let us see the advantages of solar cells they convert solar energy directly into electricity that is the advantage no other intermediate process is required they do not have any movable parts and hence need no maintenance no maintenance is required they are very rigid the source of energy for solar cells that is sunlight or normal daylight is always free solar cells do not cause any pollution like other fossil fuel they are pollution free which is a very important advantage in today's world solar cells have a longer lifetime solar cells which are used in the satellite have a long lifetime of 10 to 12 years so these are the applications of solar cells solar cells are used widely in portable power supplies calculators watches toys etc solar cells are used in satellites and other space applications a very very important application of solar cell because in the space there is no other mode of generating the electricity for the satellite only solar cells generate them solar rooftop systems generate electricity for residential and commercial use a very important application nowadays solar cells are also used for powering street lights so such many applications are there of solar cells and solar cells is the future of energy generation we can say that so that's all for this video lecture i hope you enjoyed and gained a good knowledge from this video lecture thank you very much